Josh McDaris here with a Rampant Design Tools tutorial. Today I'll be demonstrating just one of many, many ways that you can use FrostFX to spice up your next project. To give you a brief introduction to FrostFX, these are 70 completely organic elements shot with a red camera system and delivered at a whopping 3K. For those of us working in a 720 or 1080 workspace, that means that there is a lot of room to move these around or scale them. Today I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, however the techniques I'll be demonstrating should translate over quite nicely to any professional NLE. That said, let's move on to our project. We have two clips here, some casual skiing, and then this guy moving rather quickly down the slope. Now, you'll notice I just have a straight cut here, but I'd like to add a stylized transition. For that, we're going to go over to our Frost FX element number 46, and the reason I chose this one is because the frost appears and disappears rather quickly. And right about here, the frost fills the whole frame. That's the part that we want to cover our cut with. Now, once you get to about 3 seconds and 15 frames, not a whole lot happens at that point. So we're not even going to worry about using the tail end of this clip. Not only that, but we want to keep our transition relatively short. No more than about 3 seconds. I'm going to hit O on my keyboard to set the out point of my clip, go to the beginning and hit I to set the end point, and I'm going to drag this element down and put it right on top of our cut. I'm working in a 720 by 1280 sequence, so I'd like to scale this down a bit just so that I can see more of my element in the final transition. To do that, I'm going to select my element on the timeline, go to Effect Controls, Motion, and I'm going to scale it down to about 58%. Now, as you can see, this element was shot on black, so we're going to need to play with it just a little bit to make it work for us. We'll go back to our Effect Controls, go to Opacity, Blend Mode, and under blend modes you can use lighten, screen, color dodge, but for this example I'm going to use overlay. Now you can see our frost in our original footage. Now if I just play with the opacity of our element here, you can actually see that's our original footage, and that's with the overlay. So it's added quite a bit of contrast to our shot. Now the problem with that is, if we go back to the beginning of our timeline and play this back, it instantaneously changes to that high contrast overlay. We want to ease into that. To do that, we're going to go to our effects panel and find a dissolve. In this case, I'm going to use a cross dissolve. And I'm going to put one at the beginning and end of our element. So now when I play this back, our overlay fades in and out quite nicely. The next thing I notice is that the frost is kind of disappearing down here simply because it's white on white. I don't necessarily want to change the color of the frost, but I do want to make it more visible. In Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, you now have the option to alt, click, and drag a clip to duplicate it. So now with two of these clips stacked on top of each other, you can see that the frost is much more obvious, and it's actually added even more contrast to our shot, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now the last problem I have with this transition is that our cut is still pretty obvious. So I'm going to go back to my effects panel, and I'm going to grab another dissolve. This time, dip to white and put it right between our two video clips. This will disguise our cut and make the frost look like it's completely whiting out the screen. We'll play this back one more time. 
And there's our finished transition. It just goes to show that with the right tools and a little imagination, you never know what you might come up with. To get your hands on FrostFX via DVD or direct download, head over to RampantDesignTools.com, also on Facebook and Twitter. Again, I'm Josh McDarris. We'll see you next time.